I said, uh, uh, today we're going to be talking about the Ruth Bell Riverboat, and this is not uh, obviously a real uh, technical uh, medical talk. Um, it's really uh, the purpose is uh, to engage our, our listening audience. I really want um, uh, volunteers, especially with Samaritan's Purse and World Medical Mission, um, to just know a little bit more about some of the various projects that we're involved with and entice you uh, to pray and think about going. Um, it's a, just a phenomenal experience and um, encourage you to go. Um, please, during the discussion, I'm, I'll dedicate some time at the end for questions and answers, but if you have a question out there, please, um, you know, if you look at the little icons, you'll see uh, there's a little hand up there that you can just click onto, and I'll call on you. Um, if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to do that. But um, So, uh, the Ruth Bell Riverboat, I uh, had the good uh, fortune of uh, actually taking my daughter, uh, who's in high school, with me uh, on this trip, and it was just a phenomenal uh, experience. Um, let me start off with um, those of you all at World Medical Mission, I know you're f familiar with the Krugers. This is uh, Dr. Ray and uh, Connie Kruger. He is a, a family practitioner that practices uh, just outside of Mayo Clinic and uh, uh, Rochester, Minnesota, and that's his wife, Connie. She's a dental hygienist, and they accompanied me on the trip. <clears throat> I did steal a lot of the photographs uh, from Connie, so I just wanted to acknowledge uh, them with this uh, presentation and, um, and just kind of introduce you to them. They have volunteered uh, over the years on a lot of various uh, trips with World Medical Mission, and we certainly appreciate their contributions. So uh, just to start off with, I just wanted to give you a little bit of uh, geography lesson here, um, taking us down to South America. Uh, if you'll look right there, I've got, uh, of course, I've got Bolivia highlighted there um, and the arrow drawn. It's centrally located. It's just to the west of uh, Brazil. Um, it is landlocked. In fact, at one point it wasn't. Um, there were several wars uh, with Chile. And uh, I think there's, uh, uh, maybe I shouldn't say this, there's still probably a little bit of uh, resentment there because uh, they did get their coastline, but it is landlocked. Um, it's one of the uh, poorer countries uh, in, in South America. A lot of the um, persons in the country do a lot of, uh, like, sustenance farming uh, is, uh, is very, very common. And, and as I said, it is uh, quite impoverished. Um, just to give you a little bit of demographics uh, of, the, of the country, about 55% uh, of the people are indigenous, 15% um, are European, and then about 30% are mestizo or mixed, so they're both Indian and, and of European descent. Some of the uh, more common um, indigenous uh, uh, people groups that you will uh, encounter are Quechua, uh, Aymara, uh, Chik uh, Chikwitano, and Guarani. I probably butchered them in pronunciation, pronunciation, but those are some of the groups that you'll um, commonly um, encounter, some of the indigenous groups. Most of the groups, when we would uh, um, reach out to these um, uh, folks that live uh, on the banks of the tributaries of the Amazon, they do speak Spanish, but if you do get back far enough, some of the communities we reach, they just uh, speak their uh, indigenous, their native uh, language. Um, in terms of religion, uh, as you can imagine, most of the people that we uh, worked with uh, were, were uh, Catholic, or I, would, I should say nominal Catholic. A lot of it is mixed with animism, too, so a lot of superstitious beliefs and so forth. Um, but uh, so uh, we, uh, we flew down to um, La Paz, which is at about 14,000 feet, and you will, uh, I encourage you to take your um, Diamox, your medication for high altitude. Uh, you will, I did definitely, I mean, fairly good shape, and I did definitely notice the, the high altitude, so uh, you will, uh, you should prepare yourself from, for that, but uh, from there we did um, fly down to Trinidad, you'll fly over the Andes Mountain, and Andes Mountains, and if you're nervous uh, flying, this, this flight will definitely uh, get to you, but it's an incredible scenery, just beautiful. Um, let's see, um, Matthew uh, 28, 19, we're all very, very familiar with this. If you're in missions, this is probably the most quoted scripture. In fact, to the point of being, sometimes I think it kind of loses its, its essence, so we have to be careful. But um, I'll just read it to you. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and, the, uh, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Um, 
that's just part of the verse, but I, I, lo- I love that verse because it really, I think it talks about um, not only uh, winning uh, people for Christ, but discipleship too, and um, it's a, a verse that we, uh, in, in medical missions, do hold dear to heart and encourage you, uh, even though so it is a very, very common verse to just think about that. Uh, the thing that I love about the Ruth Bell Riverboat is it very uh, practically um, applies that verse um, and uh, reaches these, uh, these people uh, for the gospel. So, uh, of course, here's a picture of the, of the boat. Um, if you are involved with Samaritan's Purse, um, a little bit of history, um, Daniel Zyden, actually, he used to be the uh, regional director for Latin America. This was actually his idea. Um, I think he kind of, he um, met his wife years ago, who's from Chile. They met on one of the mercy ships. And so he envisioned on a smaller scale uh, a boat uh, that would uh, uh, travel on the Amazon and, and reach uh, uh, those that, uh, unreached people groups for the gospel. And, and uh, this is uh, his uh, vision uh, become reality there. Um, it's just a phenomenal uh, uh, experience, uh, as I will take you through. We'll see. Here's just a, a picture of the boat. We're getting ready to embark. Again, that's down in Trinidad uh, at the, at the, um, one of the tributaries of, of the Amazon. Um, if you happen to uh, be fortunate enough to go, um, this is your SP team leaders. Uh, Tom and Patty Ovington, um, again, a little bit, uh, there's, uh, SP is, there's, it's a close-knit family. If you know um, David um, and um, Gabby Phillips, uh, this is Gabby's uh, parents, actually. And uh, they actually grew up in Mexico, and they're uh, both very, very fluent in uh, uh, Spanish. Uh, but they're just incredible hosts of the boat. Uh, they really, they take, they're really, they're kind of like the mom and dad of the boat. They take great care of you. In fact, every morning I would get up early for devotions, and Tom, uh, I call him the captain stooping, the captain stooping of the uh, Ruth Bell River boat. If y'all remember uh, the love boat years ago? He's the captain stooping. He actually looks like him too, I think. <laughs> but um, uh, he would always beat me up, and uh, he would wake up before I did in the morning and always have a cup of coffee uh, waiting for me, uh, which was uh, very much appreciated. So they will definitely take care of you um, if you uh, um, if you happen to participate. Um, so. This is the team, and I just wanted to introduce you to the medical team that went along. And here we all were. We looked just a little bit silly. We're dressed up in Bolivian uh, garb there. Um, but uh, let's see. Of course, uh, starting going from left to right, that's uh, myself. I'm embarrassed to say. <laughs> and then uh, right next uh, to, to myself is um, Dr. Um, Co- uh, Goebel and uh, his wife. Uh, so that's uh, Bill and Jane Goebel. He's the dentist, and she's actually a hygienist. And then right next to them, I've already shown you a picture of the Krugers, but that's Ray and Connie Kruger. She's also a hygienist, and he's a family practitioner. And so uh, I'm an internist, and so Tom and I, I'm sorry, um, uh, Ray and I were the doctors on board, and, and uh, Bill was the dentist. Uh, and then lastly um, is um, Joe DeVries. Uh, he was a logistician volunteer that uh, accompanied us on the trip. Um, I will say this. If you... It, uh, if you haven't been out with World Medical Mission or, or in, uh, I guess I should say, uh, various projects like this, um, the bonding is phenomenal. I mean, you'll make friends for life and um, as you serve Christ. Here's just another picture of all of us at the end of the trip on the Ruth Bell. We're at the uh, top deck there. And the cool thing is, is um, uh, the bottom deck um, is uh, where we provide our care. It's a primary care outreach where we have a, a room dedicated for uh, dental care and then uh, another room dedicated for medical care and then on the t- uh, and also uh, down below there's a, like a common dining hall and um, kind of a, a central uh, place um, to, to meet and have devotions uh, in the morning and then uh, up above where we're standing that's where all your the barracks uh, where you stay and um, anyway it's it's uh, it's not um, like a Disney cruise but it's, it's very nice it's very nice we, we were uh, well cared for. Um, just real quickly, uh, right there it says the Ruth Bell. Um, it, of course, is named after uh, Ruth Bell Graham, 
uh, the late Ruth Bell Graham, who is the wife, uh, of course, of Billy Graham. And um, uh, we could talk uh, so much about her and her ministry over the years, but this is uh, named in honor of her. Um, the scenery, uh, I, I will get in a few minutes, I'll get to the, the medical <laughs> portion, but I just kind of wanted to introduce you to what you'll see if you go. The scenery is just phenomenal. Um, here's just some of the, the, the jungle that you'll see as you uh, float down the river. Um, I wish I had pictures. I never did get pictures of monkeys, but occasionally you'll see monkeys in the trees. Um, and I'll show you some of the other wildlife that you'll encounter. But you will just see phenomenal um, wildlife uh, and, and landscape as you, as you float along. There's uh, one sky. Some of the skies are just phenomenal, too. And it's really cool, too, because um, it's so quiet. Um, of course, out there you are well aware, well uh, away from any, uh, you know, certainly electricity or roadways or uh, anything uh, along, you know, of modern civilization. So you really you feel like you've gone back into yesteryear. So um, in terms of, of the, the people uh, that uh, utilize the river, it is uh, well utilized, um, although it's, it is a very remote uh, uh, area. There's, a, a, of course, the people, as I said, a lot of them are sustenance farm, uh, farmers, but uh, as you can imagine, they utilize uh, the river extensively, too. Um, you'll see just a lot of uh, homemade boats uh, for fishing and commerce. Uh, we were predominantly on the Memore River, which again is a tributary of the uh, Amazon. Here's a gentleman, um, I'm assuming, preparing bamboo for market or for personal use. Um, I'm not sure you can see that real well. That's loaded with either banana or plantain, um, which is like a cooking banana. And uh, so you'll see things like that uh, occasionally floating up and down the river. Uh, of course, uh, extensive fishing. The fishing is phenomenal there. Um, you, you do uh, work and, and provide medicine, but they do occasionally allow you to fish. I'll show you a few pictures. Um, and uh, I'll just go back there. You'll see a lot of people, I'll show you in a second, but a lot of people uh, utilizing these very uh, long uh, dugout canoes. A lot of kids, they'll just be loaded with, you know, you'll see, some of them, sometimes you'll see 10 kids in a, in a canoe, but occasionally they'll have a, a motor on it. Uh, as, as this one does, so that they can uh, get to and fro quickly uh, with commercial fishing. Um, I'm not even sure I can read this, but I just um, that's another a picture that Connie Kruger took. But it says uh, Hebrews 11:3. Through faith we understand that the world, uh, the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. You have to stop and think about that, ponder that a second, but I love that verse. Uh, and basically the bottom line is it's God's creation, and um, it's his handiwork. And, and I'll tell you, it's so picturesque there, and it really just makes you stop and just wonder about God and his creation and how powerful he is. It's just, uh, just magnificent there. Um, as I said, you'll see these dugout canoes, and you're like, how do they keep from tipping? I never did see one tip over, but I always was wondering. But just uh, and the other thing I'm just going to point out, and, and I've got a, a bunch of pictures. Um, but uh, the, the the people, the children are just so beautiful. Let's see, pictures are not showing on my screen. Um, using Mac here, so that might be a problem. Um, Danita, yeah, it's it's probably um, um, uh, a Java um, based platform. And uh, when I send out um, uh, every week, it says before the meeting, if you'll go to that, there's a URL website. If you'll go to that website, um, and it will um, uh, take you through how to prepare your um, computer to handle that Java-based platform. That, that's the problem. I'm sorry. Can, can everybody else see the pictures? OK. Yep, very good. Okay, all right. So um, here's uh, just uh, a lot of times when you're you're uh, leaving, uh, taking off. Uh, a lot of the kids would run to the the riverbank, and they'd all be waving to you. And of course, it breaks your heart. Uh, some cute uh, uh, kids. Um, here's just um, uh, 
uh, little uh, brother and sister that I took their picture uh, in front of their hut. Uh, and, and in the background, you can see their hut, and, and that's pretty classic of what you'll see um, with these various uh, communities that are along the riverbanks. Um, they live, and usually it's just a one-room structure. Uh, usually the base will be of wood, and the and the it'll be a thatched roof, um, but very very modest dwellings. And uh, as I said, these people, um, in terms of economic standards, are uh, not well off, but uh, fortunately they do have abundant resources. Um, they're hardworking. Here's a woman. Uh, I believe she was. Uh, they were, she was cracking nuts. I don't know what kind they were, but in, nonetheless, these people, as I said, they're, uh, they have to work hard uh, to, to uh, maintain and to provide for themselves, and, and indeed they do that. And I just have a few more pictures. Of, yeah, actually, it's not, it, it was unusual for me to, for them to have a bike, uh, but, but uh, this, this group did. And again, you can just see just um, beautiful people. Uh, Jesus said, let the little children come uh, unto me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of uh, heaven uh, belongs to such as these, Matthew 19, 14. And again, the thing I love about the Ruth Bell River boat is it really it's, it's uh, putting into practice uh, uh, going out, as I said, Matthew 28, just going out and reaching uh, people, a lot of, uh, lot of uh, children that are benefited medically and, and, and uh uh, with dental care too. Um, let's see, that's just another girl. I thought she was just beautiful. I said, and uh, in my broken Spanish, I say, La gente de Bolivia son tan hermosa. Just the, the people are so beautiful, and she was just a cute little girl. So, uh, what did we eat? Again, I promise you, the, the medical part's coming. But, <laughs> uh, you know. Uh, First things first, what's important, food. So what did we eat? So unfortunately, we had already decapitated this fish. But man, I wish I could say I caught this, but I didn't. But uh, the, the river is loaded. This is one of the type of catfish you'll see. It's real common. It's uh, cerubi. They're called the great Amazon catfish. And they can get really large. And I can say they are. I didn't catch it, but I did eat it. And it is unbelievable. It really, it doesn't taste uh, fishy at all. It really is just a, uh, it's a very uh, refreshing white meat. It's, it's delicious. And so we ate, uh, oftentimes we would eat uh, fresh uh, fish that we, uh, and some of them I did catch. Uh, if you'll see right there, that is a piranha. Um, and there's an abundance of piranha there. And I actually did catch a, a number of piranha. <laughs> there I am on the left there, some piranha that we caught. Swim a lot in it? Yeah, we didn't oh. swim. I was going to swim. Actually, I did it. I was always, you know, you always are wondering about that, you know, because you've seen these horror movies yeah, on TV. And, yeah. And that can happen. It usually doesn't. There's certain regions of South America where I think actually in Brazil where they're even smaller, the fish, but they, they, they really swim in, in large schools and, and – um, and if you do expose enough blood and flesh, they can they can have at it. So, um, but we didn't test the waters. We did not go. We actually we did swim in, uh, in the the lagoons are really uh, where it's loaded with piranha. But really, that we did swim in the river. So, uh, and we survived. Um, but again, we didn't have like you know if I had an open wound or something like that, I'd probably think twice about it. But anyway, on the right is the uh, there it made it to the frying pan, and I and it really is delicious. Very very good. Um, you also just uh, uh, experience an uh, abundance of fresh fruit every morning. We would have that with our um, uh, with our breakfast, and I can't even identify. There was a lot of fruit I couldn't even identify, but I ate it, and it was very, very good. So I hope it wasn't a forbidden fruit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, so you'll get uh, you're you're well fed. So real quickly, um, wildlife. Um, what did we see? So I, I told someone today we really did catch alligator, and they didn't believe me. <laughs> I didn't say how big it was. <laughs> this is uh, Andrew James. He's also on SP uh, Bolivia staff and just a great guy. His wife uh, is Angie. She's a, a physician. She's staying at home with her children right now. Um, but uh, he's, he's kind of like the first mate, sort of like Gilligan. And uh, anyway, he's just a phenomenal guy, again, just uh, servant's heart. The thing that I loved about the Ruth Bell boat too, it's a, a dichotomous uh, group of people. You have both American and um, and Bolivian people working uh, together, 
and uh, some of the staff, the Bolivian staff, they don't speak uh, hardly any uh, English at all. Um, but you'll get to know them. They they wait on you hand and foot, the whole staff, and they're just phenomenal um, just to be uh, with them and serving. And I can tell you they're all really, they just have servant's heart. They really uh, love God, and, and, and you can tell it's not a job. It's a, it's a real calling. Um, they're great people. Um, literally... Uh, Andrew, I'm going I'm to tell on Andrew. He wanted to be able to say that he was bitten by an alligator. <laughs> so he really did. I, and then I scared him. I told him what kind of infections he could get from an alligator bite. You really can. But uh, anyway, nonetheless, he did. He let that little alligator bite his finger, and now he can proudly say that he's been bitten by a Bolivian alligator. There's a skull of an alligator that I, I found on uh, the shore of a lagoon. I actually I, I snug at home. Um, but uh, I don't think uh, probably the biggest alligator I saw was probably about six feet. Uh, but so you do have to be qu uh, careful when you're swimming to, to watch out for. It. And we did see some poisonous snakes too. There's incredible. There's tons of tortoise. There's a shell that my daughter and I are uh, holding. Um, so you'll see a ton of turtle. Um, this is uh, you'll see this over and over again. The capybara. Um, it's the world's largest rodent. They look like a, a, a massive beaver, and they're usually on the shore, and they're in groups of about five to ten, and they're just sort of sitting along the shore there. But, but they are the world's largest rodent. They're like they large rats. Do they eat them? I think they might. Actually, I, I believe someone told me they did. I didn't actually taste them, but <laughs> I, I heard. You son what? I'm sorry. Our son when he was in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they something like that. Oh, okay. I mean, they certainly took Copy bar. Okay. I, I think they did. I'm not positive. So um, just a, uh, another thing that's really cool, you'll see, you'll see it over and over again. Just literally there was thousands and thousands of pink freshwater dolphins. Mm -hmm. And they're pretty big. They're like six to seven feet. And they're um, rarely, occasionally, you'll, mm -hmm. one will come completely out of the water. But that's unusual. But you'll... You'll hear them breathing, coming up for air, and you'll see them all over the place. And they really are pink, pink mm -hmm. freshwater dolphin. They're a beautiful sight. So, um, so getting uh, to what we went for, visiting the communities. So during our travels uh, along the, um, the Memore River, uh, we did uh, visit seven communities. Depending on what time of year it is uh, and the height of the river, uh, this was a particular um, uh, season where the, the river uh, was low and so we couldn't go back as far. So sometimes you'll visit more than these seven, but we visited Camiaco, uh, Loma de Amor, uh, El Masi, Santa Rosa, San uh, Antonio de Lores, El Rosario, and San Bartolome. Um, and uh, each community is really distinct. Um, they really, they range in size. Probably there was, uh, I think one community, there was probably only about four or five families uh, left that had really um, gone down in size. But then um, one, uh, I think Kamiaka, uh, that was the first place we visited, and there was up to like 500 people there. So it was a pretty, pretty big community. Um, our typical day, I'm going to take you through our classic day. Um, we did... Um, uh, we would always start off the day in devotion, which is um, is good. And uh, um, this is uh, sort of like, uh, he's like the other first mate. Um, and I'm, his name is escaping me, I'm embarrassed to say. But um, he uh, would uh, sing us those Spanish songs, great singer. And then, of course, we would sing, this is the, uh, we would read from the Santa Biblia, and we would take turns leading devotion. So that was a great way to, to start the morning off early. Um, and then soon thereafter, uh, on the shore, uh, we would have a, uh, these canoes, these dugout canoes, and the people would be waiting for us. We would uh, blow our, have a blow horn, and we would uh, announce that we were ready to take patients. And they would line up along the shoreline, and then we would just take them uh, with the canoe onto the boat, uh, the Ruth Bell boat. And then, as you can see here, uh, they would just line up and, and wait for us. Uh, very, very patient. Sometimes they had to wait a, a very long time. In fact, especially for the dentist, uh, unfortunately, um, these people really had uh, very uh, poor uh, dental care, really carious mm -hmm. teeth, a lot of uh, teeth were missing. Um, so really they needed, uh, honestly, they needed dental care more than they needed medical care. Um, I was really, overall, just a comment about the, um, the people, I was really quite surprised. Uh, overall, 
I would say um, I've been to a, a large number of you know developing countries, and I was impressed overall with their health. I think um, number one is they don't smoke; they don't have access to cigarettes. So I don't think I met a patient that smoked, and so that's number one. There is some um, alcoholism in these communities, um, but uh, um, it, I don't think it was too substantial. Um, uh, but they have abundant resources. They eat very, very healthy, and you know they have a lot of access to good food, um, you know, good agriculture and fish. And so overall, they were pretty healthy. In fact, they were actually starting to get some westernized um, illnesses, chronic illnesses, like I did see some diabetes, hypertension. Um, so, uh, uh, and, and you'll see that in a lot of developing countries where they're starting to become westernized, um, and, and Bolivia is not uh, an exception. Um, the days were sometimes long, uh, but very re rewarding treating patients. Um, here I am, very pensive and in thought. Um, <laughs> um, we, we did see patients, I think we started it around, uh, started seeing patients about 8.30 or 9 in the morning, and we'd go till 12.30, and then we would resume at 2.30 and go till about 6 or 6.30. Um, so here we are seeing patients, more patients. And more patients. So um, just uh, in, in uh, a wide variety. Uh, truthfully, um, and, and just to kind of tell you about some of the things we saw, I didn't expect uh, to see uh, more uh, tropical disease than we actually did. Um, there's a, a lot of dengue there. There's a lot of dengue. There's, um, they say there's, uh, in this area, there's no uh, malaria, which really surprised me. I suspect there is some, but it's um, very low on the radar. So, um, it's, but it's, it, yeah, it's not very common, and I'm not sure why. But, but uh, dengue is very common. There's a ton of, um, as you can imagine, um, uh, dermatologically related disease like um, fungal infections. A ton of uh, uh, fungal infections on the skin and abscesses, things like that, and um, uh, a lot of respiratory illness. Again, these people are exposed to in their huts, you can imagine they're exposed to excess smoke, which I imagine is a contributor um, to their respiratory illness. But we saw a lot of that. Um, a lot of our, as you can imagine, osteoarthritis. A lot of the elderly people had a terrible um, just arthritis from wear and tear over the, the years. Um, and as I said, we, we saw some westernized uh, chronic illnesses too. Um, here's the, um, the dental care. <coughs> Uh, consultorio Dental, and um, Bill Goebel, um, he's from Kansas, um, phenomenal dentist. I mean, really, he almost never came up for air. I mean, he would go into his little clinic there, and he just worked incessantly all day, and uh, that's Andrew James serving as his assistant, and I don't think anybody could really keep up with him, so we, they would rotate hygienists going through there. He had three hygienists to his, to his, his himself. There's Connie Kruger providing uh, uh, dental hygiene. And they actually, I, I, I'm embarrassed to say I hadn't seen a dentist in like five years. And Bill, um, throughout the week, he, he uh, included us in his uh, uh, already extremely busy schedule. So if, if you go on the Ruth Bell boat, you'll get free dental care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a real bonus. So please, please go. If for nothing else, free dental care. Um, we did actually uh, um, treat one piranha bite, and it was actually, and it was just one bite. Um, uh, he had, uh, apparently, he's a commercial fisherman, and he had caught the fish, and somehow, in, in taking it off his, his line, uh, it managed to bite him. And it was, I didn't get a picture of the actual bite, but it was really impressive bite. So I could imagine, um, if you have a few minutes and several, you know, of the piranha attack you, they could do a, do a number. Um, let's see, that's uh, Ray Kruger examining a, a, a little kid there with his uh, otoscope, and there's his friendly assistant in the background. That's the, uh, the captain, as I said, Captain Stibbing. Um, we, we provided a lot of obstetrical care, as you can imagine, um, and uh, that was one of the um, um, suggestions I had when I came back. Um, we did have a fetal uh, Doppler. Um, but I had mentioned maybe perhaps getting a uh, ultrasound. It would really uh, uh, enhance our diagnostic abilities on the boat. So um, 
I'm hopefully going to look into that and see if that would be a possibility. But a lot of obstetrical care there. And these women are, you talk about stoic. I mean, uh, like I was talking to this one woman, and she really, um, uh, some of these women, they literally they just have the baby by themselves. Completely, I mean, by themselves. They just like go in a room and have it. <laughs> I mean, I cannot imagine that. But anyway, that they really do that, and you can imagine though, if if um, if there's any complication, they're they're in real trouble. So um, a lot of obstetrical needs there. Um, there we are. Um, it's really um, it's it's really uh, cool uh, when you use the fetal Doppler and you can audibly hear the the baby's heartbeat. The baby's heartbeat, uh, as you can imagine, is quite a bit faster than ours. Yeah, it's around 150, 140, 150. And and for the mom to hear the heartbeat, it's so uh, gratifying. I mean, they get a big smile on their face, and it really is rewarding to them. Uh, Psalms 127:3. It says, Lo, uh, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Um, and anyway, so it's neat to be able to provide that obstetrical care and, and help the moms out uh, bring their children in, into the world. Um, here's just that these people were incredibly patient. Um, truthfully, uh, it's, it's tough when you go into developing countries and some of these people wait for hours or days on end and y'all don't take offense to this. And then you come home and, <laughs> and you get bombarded by patients that are upset waiting 30 minutes. It's like, ah! But um, anyway, we're fortunate as Americans um, to have uh, access to health care because some of these people really, these people were it not for the Ruth Bell vote, they wouldn't have access to health care. So it's, it's really providing a phenomenal um, benefit to these people. Again, it's just cool to be able to hang out with these kids. You'll fall in love with them. Um, they're just great, great people. The great thing, of course, about the Ruth Bell Riverboat is through the auspices of medicine and dental care, you get to reach them with the gospel. And uh, as I told you, these people have servant's heart. Um, uh, this is uh, Tom uh, Ovington, again, the captain, and um, he was very, very diligent in all the communities. I mean, he's done this over and over again. You know, I, it's a little bit probably for him like a Groundhog Day, but he... Every time, I mean, he would go, at, you know, at night, even when we were exhausted, he'd go and, and show, you know, a Christian-based based, uh, movie, or he would go and we would um, support uh, churches there, um, or we would have evangelistic outreaches to the communities, and he was always at the helm uh, providing that uh, servant leadership. Can't say enough great things about the staff, but really it was just phenomenal to be able to um, reach out to these um, children and their moms. And as you can see here, um, there was, they weren't as um, frequent in visiting, but uh, the dads, we did reach some of the dads too. And um, here is uh, Miriam. She was our um, uh, uh, chef uh, on the boat. And as I said, these people, um, they wear different hats. And here she is um, holding up the word of God. And I just emphasizing the power of God's word. It trans sends um, languages and, and different cultures, and, um, you know, um, our job is not to uh, win them to Christ, uh, but to present the gospel, and, and, and the gospel does the rest, the, the, the God's word. Anybody have any questions as I'm moving along, or any comments or anything? Mm -hmm. Feel free to wait, raise your hands out there or, or uh, make comments. Um, as you can see, the kids and the moms are all getting into it. Here's a uh, group participation, and, and it's it really it's a lot like uh, kind of like vacation Bible school, if you will. And uh, uh, you don't have to speak Spanish uh, to go. Um, they have uh, we have plenty of interpreters. It helps if you do. You get to speak to them firsthand, but um, um, but uh, don't let that be a hindrance to you. And one thing I don't know if you all have noticed this, but one thing I think it's um, you know God knows um, when He sends us out to different cultures. There's something so powerful about going to a different culture. Um, it's like, for it's like I know personally, I, it's, it's almost like I feel empowered. Like for some reason, I think, you know, for you to go all that way, it speaks volumes to the people that you you've interrupted your life and, and you've gone through those, those efforts to get there to 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 serve them, to minister to them, and and I think God will use you in a powerful way, even if you don't speak the language. And, and on the other end, I think, you know, um, it, 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 you feel empowered, and I think perhaps the Holy Spirit does 
uh, indeed do that. And on the other end, they uh, are very appreciative. So, um, so as I said, for men, women, and sh uh, children, I think there was one man in the crowd sitting back there. They usually kind of hide in the back. Maybe there's none. I can't really tell. But anyhow, um, and, and I just mentioned that because um, in Latin culture, even more so, you know, men are, you know, sometimes they're they're recognized as the village leaders and so forth. So it's important that we minister to you know the, the women, uh, the children, and, and the men, uh, so that it has a big impact on the whole village. Um, here's sort of a celebration at the end. They get. Uh, the kids get these bolsas, these little bags full of, you know, with, uh, with their little gifts, regalos, and they have balloons here. And so these kids really don't have much uh, in terms of, of, of toys and, and, and material uh, items, and so they were uh, really joyful to receive that. But, uh, of course, with that, too, is animated Bible verses and uh, encouragements uh, to encourage them in, in their decisions and faith. This was uh, one night. This was a, a real encouragement to me. Um, this was a family that were they were had been patients on the boat before, and and they had the, the whole family had recently uh, accepted Christ, prayed to receive Christ, um, but they they were um, in their newfound faith. They were meeting some um, opposition. They um, they had modern, they had changed their life. You know, there is some revelry and, and and partying and things that go on in some of these villages, and, and they were. You know, uh, making a stand for Christ and and um, and had changed. I mean, they were receiving some. I guess um, they were being chastised for that to some degree. And and so really, they were um, just looking for encouragement. And they had a lot of questions. They had really, you could tell, they had really been reading the Bible because they were asking some really uh, inquisitive, um, uh, you know, good, uh, difficult questions. Um, um, in regard to the Bible, and and uh, and so it was a great time of, of discipleship. And you have a question. Oh, so, okay, thank you. It says, does the area have any community health workers? Um, the need to ask a great question. Um, yes and no. Um, some of these communities actually they had a like a, um, a health clinic, um, but the they um, all the people in the communities told me that the the doctor uh, or it would be a nurse uh, or a healthcare worker would show up about once a month, and they usually showed up without medications. And so the people would always laugh and say, what good is a doctor without medication? So um, there was some semblance of health care, uh, Danita, but it was, it was very uh, marginal at best. Um, so I think they're, you know, they have good uh, intentions in providing that care, but these are very, very remote communities, and I'm sure funding and resources are very limited. So uh, truly, like I said, um, without the Ruth Bell vote, a lot of these um, uh, people would go without care. Good question. Um, so I just wrote here, this is a great verse for discipleship, um, 2 Timothy 2.2. 2, it says, the things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. And so, and, and I think that verse applies to this family. I mean, you could tell they had made a very, very sincere uh, commitment for Christ. And um, they were wanting fellowship and discipleship. And so they came aboard the, the Ruth Bell, and we had dinner with them and just had a great uh, evening of fellowship and, and discipleship for them. And, and it was an encouragement to me, too. So um, God wants us to, uh, you know, reach out in, in the form of discipleship. Laurie says, uh, along with Danita's question, did anyone do some health messaging to people while they were waiting or in the evenings? Good question. Um, yes, we, we would always... Uh, uh, do that. We did have, again, some sort of, um, they were pretty simplified um, um, uh, animated uh, messages that we would hand out. They were uh, pretty basic hygiene, um, just about, and, 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 and some of these people really uh, haven't been educated even in basics in regard to, to um, hygiene. We would uh, uh, at times pass out toothbrushes and toothpaste, and, and again, just uh, messages about uh, hand washing and um, uh, other uh, other uh, uh, health uh, related um, messages. People from the boat. Yes, uh, if I'm understanding you correctly, uh, as they waited, our staff would do that. Is that answering your question, Laurie? Uh huh. Good deal. 
there I am with my, uh, she's much prettier than I am, <laughs> my lovely daughter there on the right. Um, I saw that leaf. I thought that was pretty cool. If that was tobacco, man, they could make some money. <laughs> they could make some money. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Does anybody have any idea what that leaf is? John 10.10, 10, it says, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Um, I just want to stop and say thank you, World Medical Mission, for letting me um, bring uh, my daughter on this trip. It was, I think, life transformational. And uh, um, it just uh, had a, she's considering a, a career in medicine, and so I think it will have a big impact on her. And I'm just, I guess I'm kind of um, being a dad and just showing off my daughter here a little bit. Here we are in the morning. It was surprisingly cold when we went, and yeah, we had to, we had the, we were on the top. That's pretty cool in the morning. You get up there about 6 in the morning and you can appreciate the sunrise and, and bring your Bible up there and a cup of coffee that, that Captain Ovington has prepared for you. And uh, so early morning quiet times on the top of the Ruth Bell. And it's, like I said, very pristine and very quiet. And really the only sound you, you may hear is the, is the dolphins surfacing for, for air. And then there's the, the beautiful sunset uh, on the Amazon. What, what time is it? Oh, I'm, still got, I'm, I'm approaching the, the end here, so I'm finishing early. So, so I just said farewell from Bolivia. So, um, so I just wanted to stop there. We're, we're um, well ahead of schedule here, but anybody have any other questions or comments? Um, it doesn't even have to be uh, specifically to the Ruth Bell boat. It can be about uh, anything that uh, this uh, reminds you of in your uh, mission experience. Um, anything at all? Can I? Um, Absolutely. Okay. Tom took that high altitude medicine. Uh, yes. But our son, Diamox. Yeah, our son, who's an ER doctor in Florida, mm -hmm. said that Motrin works to adjust you to the altitude. Mm -hmm. And they did it when they went skiing last winter. They skied every day, all day long, took Motrin, and never had any problem with the altitude. Huh. Isn't that interesting? That I don't is. know why. The, the best treatment, uh, truthfully, the best treatment for high altitude sickness is a slow ascent. But, like I said, you fly into La Paz, and that's not, <laughs> that's not exactly a slow ascent. That's, that's high. Yeah, it's very, very high. I, I honestly, I don't know about, uh, I've, I've never read about motion yeah, for high know. altitude it's fitness. Look for it. it may very well work. I, I just don't know, yeah. honestly. Well, he, he's an ER doctor, so I thought. I, I bet he knows better than I. So. Well. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Seriously. seriously. No, it may, I'm sure it does. <laughs> so. Pediatric cases, did y'all see? Yeah. How many pediatric cases? What kind? Oh, what kind? Um, again, like I said, tons of um, respiratory illnesses. That was uh, by far in large the majority. Again, a lot of um, skin-related uh, issues, a lot of bad fungal infections. In peas? Yes, yeah, no, in, 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 well, in general, um, but especially peds. Um, you know, trauma-related issues, um, what else? Um, Did y'all have means to treat them with antibiotics? Yes, uh -huh. yeah, there's a, a pharmacy on board and, and uh, a pretty broad-scale broad uh, pharmacy. And, uh, but uh, truthfully, uh, Chad, it, was, it reminded me a lot of, with uh, some exceptions, it reminded me a lot of, primary care here in the States. It really, it, it surprised me. Again, um, there is some tropical disease there, but not to nearly the extent that I, it's very, um, like a lot of tropical diseases, very regional. Uh, I did, uh, as I said, Andrew James, his wife, um, uh, Angie, is Bolivian, and I did talk to her. Um, there is like uh, leishmaniasis, but it, it's very regional, and it's not uh, uh, there. And certainly there is malaria, but in this region on the Memore River, it wasn't very um, uh, 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 common. Dengue is very, very common there. Dengue is another um, a mosquito uh, uh, transmitted illness. They also call it breakbone fever, so it's like uh, the flu on steroids. But the problem with dengue is if you get repeat infections, uh, which the natives, as you can imagine, do, um, you can get what's called dengue hemorrhagic fever, and that's very, very life-threatening. So. Um, so uh, we are not susceptible to that usually because it would be, if we did uh, acquire dengue, it would be uh, uh, our first encounter probably uh, with that. And like I said, to get dengue hemorrhagic fever, it's usually from multiple exposures. So 
Congratulations. You know, Tom, um, Dick, I, I was um, really shocked. Harry. <laughs> 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 Do what? Harry. <laughs> I said Tom and Dick. Harry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Tom, Dick, and Harry. Uh, Dick. Yeah, I got Tom Wood on my mind. Uh, no, um, you know, honestly, uh, I heard very, uh, I really would thought I would hear a lot of uh, uh, lungs with uh, what we call adventitious breath sounds, like rails and ronchi. And, I really didn't hear a lot of that, so I um, I thought I would see I, I thought I would see a ton of cases that I was suspicious for TB. I know it's there, but I didn't see any definitive cases. Um, but there's no question there's got to be TB there. Yeah. Do they have illnesses like strep and like that? We we didn't um, test for strep, and I never saw. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if they did. Um, you know, again, uh, like rheumatic fever. It's rheumatic fever, uh, is, which is related to strep throat. That's, that's really, truthfully, the, the reason why you treat strep throat is, is for two, twofold. Mm -hmm. We're really threefold. But moms really want to get rid of the acute strep throat, but you can get rheumatic heart disease from it, and you can get, uh, it's called post-streptococcus, if I can say it, post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. It's a kidney disease. So that's the main reason to treat it. But, uh, that's real regional too, real common in Kenya. If you go to Tenwick Hospital, you'll see tons of, um, of post streptococcal glomerulonephritis and rheumatic heart disease, a lot of kids with that. But I didn't see a lot of kids with what I was, I saw a few people with, um, especially one girl that I bet she did have rheumatic heart disease. Um, so I'm sure there must be at least a low incidence of it there. So how do you, from, I and mean, I guess this applies to medical missions everywhere, mm -hmm. How do you approach those cases where you know you're only going to see this patient this one time yeah. and then the boat's not going to be back for another how long, I don't know, month, two months? Mm -hmm. how, how do you do that when you have a patient with compounded problems and you know, you know you've only got them for a few minutes? Right. I mean, that's always, Dr. Bransford can answer that better than I can, but, <laughs> but uh, that's always a, a big challenge. Um, you have to, like there was this one woman uh, I did, uh, you know, like uh, she had um, a, a really bad uh, fungal infection, and, and my suspicion was it was systemic. It wasn't just cutaneous. It wasn't just on her skin because it was so bad. And um, you know, and, and some of those um, antifungal agents can, can cause uh, toxicity to the liver, too, and, and you have to give it for a really prolonged period of time. And so, you know, I, you know prayerfully, I gave her a, an extended uh, dose of this medication, but truthfully, you probably in, in prayer. Um, so uh, hopefully, it, 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 you know, it worked. But, you know, ideally, I'd be checking in the States, I'd be checking her liver function test and, you know, Having her come back, um, you know. Uh, so sometimes you just you just have to modify what you do and, and just pray and, and that, it, that it works. And then you know, and, and you tell the person, instruct the person when we come back through. There is healthcare in Trinidad, um, which is a ways away, and some of these people do have some of them do have access if they're like if it's a life threatening illness. That's what the people will do. They'll go to Trinidad, and there's marginal healthcare there too. They have some surgical. Um, care there. I did have one gentleman they were concerned about for acute appendicitis. Um, I think in the end it probably wasn't, um, but uh, they do have access to surgical intervention or surgical care in Trinidad. But uh, anyway, that's a great question. You, there's sometimes there's just not a not an ideal answer. Take them to get from there to Trinidad. That's a, a great question. Um, I imagine it depends, you know, uh, which community we're at, but hours um, because a lot of these places don't have access to um, transportation of any sorts uh, unless they were able to float down the river to get there. Now some of those, can, they can get there via the river to Trinidad, um, but it would be hours uh, and, and, and a lot of it, a lot, it's cost prohibitory to a lot of them, I'm sure. Let's see, uh, growth stunting, any ideas why if they seem to have access to fish, adequate calories? maybe uh, seasonal food insecurity. You know, um, Laurie, there was maybe a little bit of um, growth stunting, but not. Uh, I'm sure they have probably micronutrient deficiencies, um, but not a caloric deficiency. So I didn't see like anything like MAM or SAM or, or profound malnutrition. I mean, these people uh, had access to a lot of calories. Um, 
so um, uh, yeah, but I'm sure they did have some some micronutrient deficiencies. Is there any follow up for the people that become new Christians mm -hmm. because yes. they all were a witness to? Them? Yeah, just like the family that came on board that uh, evening. Did they have a way to get? Um, yes, um, uh, the staff. I mean, they they know like what they uh, know when they're coming back through. So Is that the only that that's really it. Now, some of them do have um, they do have uh, some of the communities do have churches, um, but sometimes like the pastor has left, or it's just not it's not a thriving church, or um, so. So yeah, I mean that's one of the services that the, the boat does. It comes through every couple months or so, mm -hmm. and that's definitely spiritual follow-up is is uh, paramount uh, to the staff, uh, especially Tom Ovington. Really, I'd say he's um, it, it does How that. Often does this boat go out every week? Um, it goes uh, it goes for about two weeks. Uh, the trips uh, are for two or just a little over two weeks. Um, can you all um, answer how how often do they go? Um, they usually go between January and August, because mm -hmm. that's when, you know, September through December, the levels of the river are too low to kind of navigate the boat. So it's usually January through August, and we have almost one trip, or two weeks each, per month. Mm -hmm. There may be a month where we don't. Mm -hmm. have okay. One, but basically one a month. Okay. Two weeks. All right. And each of those trips goes to the same villages? No, they have a different route every time. Sometimes they may go back to the same community, and again, what he was saying, depending on the level of the river, they can go farther in, or they may not be able to. So each trip has been, there hasn't been an exact same trip yet. <laughs> They're all a little bit different. All right. So uh, I just wrote, as she said, did we see any other mission organizations perhaps through there? I certainly, I mean, this is very uh, remote. I certainly didn't see any other organizations. Um, now, we did uh, spend a little bit of time at the beginning and the end uh, in La Paz, which is, you know, a huge city. Um, I'm sure that there's uh, other organizations there. But along the river, um, it's extremely, I mean, when you, the only people you see are when you get to these communities. I mean, other than that, it's just, like I said, extremely pristine. There was no, uh, you know, Texaco gas stations or uh, quick picks or anything like that. So, Over in Brazil, there's a lot of child trafficking. On yeah. The rivers. Did you see that? Yeah. I didn't see any child trafficking or I wasn't... Um, I think I wasn't like, I guess I didn't have my antennas up for that, but I didn't see anything that alarmed me. But, you know, I'm sure it could happen. Yeah. So that's Were you all like very sad. Did you all the patients that showed up, or did you have to turn any away? Yeah, we, no, we never did turn anybody away. So, um, and and they're, um, they will modify the trip a little bit um, if, uh, according to how many patients uh, we see. Um, so, yeah, we always uh, would stay until everybody was seen. But some of them did wait a long time. So. Yeah. yeah, and they do modify the trip so they know ahead of time this is a larger community. So you may stay two or three days in one community, only one day in another community. And they keep a close eye and have so many connections. The captain of the boat actually grew up in that community and yes. stays in touch with them all the time, so he kind of knows. What's the captain's yeah. name, do you remember? Um, now that you ask, no. Yeah, I can't remember either. So. <laughs> I, 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 can't, I don't know why I can't remember. I wish I could. But yeah, he was great. So, any other questions? These are all great. So, I'm just going to talk. Is there any plan of putting any resident people in those communities? I mean, somewhat like Tom did in other places. The Village Samaritan program? Mm -hmm. He's a, he's a book out Yeah, actually, um, uh, Dr. Tom Wood is looking right now at, at, at the possibility of implementing a, a, uh, a more organized uh, primary care outreach um, with, uh, village, with uh, village health care workers in these communities. And actually, with my, we always write a trip report and at the end of our, our travels, and, and that was one of the su suggestions I made that um, that would be something would be uh, something for us to consider is training up village healthcare workers um, within the community so that we could have more regularity in their in their healthcare. So that's a 
a great question. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, that would be a tremendous benefit to these people. Yeah. So I, I hope that's something we'll, we'll look into. I will uh, encourage you know uh, that we do that with some delivery skills. Absolutely, you're not kidding. Yeah, because they're going to definitely deliver some babies. So I can't imagine doing that alone. But uh, the women yeah. that came on the boat that were pregnant, mm -hmm. were they having problems, or did they just going to be? I didn't see any um, overt complications, but uh, again, um, uh, really, uh, we had very modest um, uh, diagnostic skills. We certainly didn't do any ultrasounds or things like that. So that's that was why I made that suggestion. That's a relatively inexpensive tool, and, and it really could provide incredible uh, diagnostic, enhance our diagnostic skills and capabilities. So um, I'm going to look into that if I, if I can. Um, but, but fortunately, um, all the women I saw, they were doing very well. Um, we, you know, gave them vitamins with folate, things like that. Um, but uh, anyhow, very good. And so the skin problems because they didn't have clean water. Did they have scabies? That kind of. Yes. Thing? Yeah, they had some scabies, um, and you can imagine like staph infections. Like I, I did see one real bad abscess that I had to um, irrigate and drain. Um, and as I said, just they, they um, you know, they they can't get uh, adequate hygiene, so they are exposed to a lot of uh, infections from the skin. Yeah. I was just going to say the folate's a little late if they're already pregnant. That's true. Yes, sir. That's a little uh, behind the eight ball. Okay. 